guys and girls, welcome back to the Taylor YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, inlet manifold. Uh, we've just finished building uh, and having this fabricated up. So we've got the throttle bridge port on this side and the five runners uh, into the engine and the plenum. It's now all fully welded with a massive thank you to the guys at work who helped tilt this out. Um, and weld this all up for me, I'm giving it a little clean over with a wire wheel and trimmed the edges on both sides to make it a bit smoother so I'm not going to cut myself every time I have to lift it in and out. Um, and I'm going to talk you through the process of what we've done uh, and this video is basically just going to be showing you um, how it was welded. Um, we've got a, a little time lapse video that we did of the welding of it um, and just explaining where we're going next. <laughs> So to start with, I'm going to talk about how we uh, made the flanges. Uh, now I'm very fortunate in that I work in a fabrication company operating a plasma cutter and a water jet machine, um, which means I have the facility for uh, material and obviously the ability to cut profiles quite easy, um, obviously quite intricate and all done on a CNC program. So one of our good uh, friends um, uh, who is at Lake Goose Racing, um, they have a spare V5 engine um, in their yard and he kindly uh, went on to um, SolidWorks and designed the inlet and exhaust flanges for me um, a little while ago actually, that's probably about a year ago now. Uh, it's always been a plan for us to go to turbo after we um, built the engine, got it running NA to start with just to see that the principle works. Obviously it has been quite successful. And then now we're obviously planning to go to the turbo route. So I had the flanges ready and obviously spoke to work, um, paid them some money for it and got them cut out on the machine, which therefore you can see for anyone that is familiar with the V5, that is the, the port, how the port um, runs and works on a V5. It's also exactly the same as a VR6. Uh, 24 valve if you are to literally take one of the ports away they are identical so you've got all of these here what I have that to do though because obviously you can see this is a round pipe is I cut the um, the flange quite thick so it is out of 10 mil thick um, alley so as you can see on the port here what we have done is used hence the uh, lines uh, here where I've cut it short was so that I could get a die grinder in on both sides and smooth this out as best as possible um, and then run it straight into the pipe which then obviously goes into the main plenum uh, which you can see the plen uh, into the plenum it's been welded internally to create a smooth uh, weld that means it just runs straight into the pipe and then obviously into the engine this way thing I have had to uh, take into account is obviously when you're welding alley anyone who's ever done it or anyone who knows about it will understand that uh, an immense amount of heat gets involved into the metal and it often warps it. This is something we found along the um, flange that goes straight onto the inlet runners. So now you can see it's got a bit of a different finish to what you'd expect on a normal um, alley look. So what I did was the, the cheap version of the alternatives really you have two options you can get this machined to be flat again or you can do what I did which takes a lot of time but you can use uh, I could well, I have the ability to use a machine at work uh, during my lunch hours and run it along a linishing belt until it is completely smooth and flat and that's why it now has almost a polished look um, compared to the other bits of alley it doesn't sh it shines in a different kind of way um, I don't know if that shows up very well on the camera um, but once we've got the ports matched or squared to round for, for argument's sake, um, we then got the correct length of plenum that was required so that we could still get the bolts in, uh, the correct length of short runner, sorry. Um, and once we then got that so that we can still get the bolts in and get a tool down there to tighten them up, we then started creating the plenum. Now, anyone who follows along to our socials will have seen what it was I was doing with the plenum. 
um, and I'll put some photos up. Um, but we use two four, uh, four inch, um, so which is 114 mil um, aluminium elbows, um, and we've cut them down. Um, and I don't know if you can, you can see from the shape that there is one that's been cut short at the top and it's slightly off centre. A little bit annoying, but it is what it is. It works for a process. Um, and then we've literally just plated it this side, just plated it on the underside um, and added obviously where the throttle body will be and the frange for the throttle body, which I've had to tap the holes. Um, I don't know if that's going to load up um, and see there. But yeah, so they're tapped holes, so the throttle body literally will just be the stock V5 throttle body will just bolt straight up um, and be good to go. So the plenum for uh, the car is kind of oversized really. It's not necessarily needs to be this big um, and it may need revisions later on down the line. Um, I was looking at possibly doing a, a plate segregation to try and um, down the middle here as such inside this pipe to make sure that the airflow would go both ways. But when looking into it, you've got to understand that the air naturally travels and flows in a way that it means that it will reach a point of low pressure. So without getting too technical, if the inlet is open um, and waiting for air to come into it, the air will naturally flow into the middle port, or if that's the one that's the open or the two outside if they're open or whatever it is, it will flow to it. So in regards, we've tried to smooth everything out as much as we can and obviously die grinding it. In a dream world, you'd get something like that machined out of billet aluminium, but when you're not got thousands to spend on a budget kind of thing, this is sort of a cheap cheap farmyard spec version of it but it's, it's a way that it'll work it will still flow correctly you may lose a tiny bit of brake horsepower over what you would get if you were having one billet made and machined out of uh, one solid piece of aluminium but it's a small price to pay for what is going to get us running and get us going in the end of the day video uh, was just of my uh, colleague at work Phil who kindly uh, took some time out of his day on Saturday um, to uh, weld that up for me um, yeah it's been great help from the guys at work and they've all helped get behind me getting it done which is awesome um, having people there um, I'm not a welder um, I operate a machine as I've already said um, I'm learning to weld but I'm not of any standard of what these guys are uh, and quite frankly it's a lot easier than taking however many time, however many minutes out of their day to do it uh, rather than me doing it multiple times and it not looking as nice as what they would do in less than five minutes of it so it's wonderful and great and I can't thank them enough for what they've done um, it was a little time lapse that we had to do we had an issue with the plants so we had to uh, vac vacate one bay and jump into another so you got a little little bit of a journey around the workshop um, and yeah that's pretty much the end of the video thank you for watching I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it um, if you want to see anything else or you've got any other questions or uh, things you need answers to, feel free to leave a comment. Other than that, make sure you've liked and subscribed and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.